Hey everybody, Trey here. Welcome back to another video. Was not planning on doing a forecast discussion today, but the SPC has increased the severe weather threat across the southeast to a moderate risk. Level 4 out of 5 from central Louisiana into southern Mississippi and Alabama, with a slight risk, enhanced risk surrounding that, slight risk extending all the way back into east Texas to the uh, east coast. All hazards on the table for today. Large hail threat is going to be an issue especially from central Louisiana into southern Mississippi, 45 hatched hail threat there. The threat for some significant large to very large hail uh, is in play for today with a large hatched area for significant hail extending all the way back into east Texas to southwest South Carolina. That is going to maximize this afternoon as storms fire along and south of a stationary front across the region. We'll take a look here in just a second at the overall setup, but this hail threat is going to maximize more so this afternoon, while the tornado threat will take over more so this evening as a low-level jet intensifies across this region, particularly across the southern Mississippi into southern Alabama corridor. 15% hatched area there for the threat for tornadoes, perhaps some strong, uh, and there is a 10 hatch that's, that extends all the way back into Louisiana as well. Damaging wind also on the table for today, uh, but this uh, severe threat has definitely ramped up over the past day or two. Uh, and we're now looking at a potentially significant severe weather event on the, on the table. This is not going to be a full breakdown. We're not going to take a look at every single thing we do normally in a forecast discussion because it's already noon central daylight time and the event is already expected to be underway uh, in the next uh, few, next couple hours or so. So this is going to be an abridged version of a forecast discussion. Let's start out by just looking at what's going on right now. We have some storms that have fired across uh, southeast Mississippi into southern Alabama. These have had some sporadic, severe weather with them. Uh, they have had some supercell shapes as well. Uh, there does seem to be a little bit of a weakening trend at this point, but these need to be watched for some severe weather over the, over the next couple hours. Uh, most uh, notably, a large hail and damaging wind threat, as the low-level shear across the region is not quite there yet. You also see some storms firing back here across East Texas. Those could, there is a mesoscale discussion out for those right now as they move into East Texas and Western Louisiana. We could see watch issuance for these. These could uh, intensify over the next couple of hours, producing an all hazards threat. Again, mostly a large hail and damaging wind threat at this point, uh, but the tornado threat again will maximize later on this afternoon, late this afternoon into evening. Let's take a look right away at our weather maps. This is the 500 millibar map. You see mostly zonal flow across the region, just kind of this west-southwest flow that's entrenched across the southern half of the country. Uh, but if we go down to 700 millibars, you'll notice a little shortwave embedded in the flow. Back here across East Texas, you see this, again, mostly southwesterly flow across the region, but this little shortwave right in here is what's going to be our main focus for severe storms this afternoon and evening in the southeast. These are, this shortwave is already firing these storms out across southeast Texas, and as this shortwave moves off to the east uh, this afternoon, that will initiate more uh, development um, across the area. Now, this is a very subtle shortwave, so the forcing associated with it is going to be much weaker than a you know big, deep digging trough. So that will favor discrete storm development across the region today, and as we know, discrete storms are more favorable for significant severe weather. Not a robust surface response with this feature as it is, again, very subtle. We just mostly have south west southwesterly flow aloft across the region. We do have a stationary front that is in place, though. You see, uh, if we zoom in on our uh, surface data here, sorry, I'm a little bit discombobulated here doing this kind of off the cuff, but you'll see the wind shift here at the surface. We do have more easterly winds to the north of the boundary here, more southerly winds to the south of the boundary. So there's definitely a wind shift in here. Uh, and you can see as well by the dew points, 60s and 70s dew points down here across the Gulf Coast region with much uh, decreased values out here across northern the northern half of Mississippi into Alabama. So our, our frontal zone is somewhere in here. It's a little bit of a wavy frontal zone somewhere in this vicinity right here, stretching out all the way across East Texas. That is going to be our rough position of the stationary front this afternoon. This is going to surge a little bit farther northward as we go into the afternoon hours. Uh, the moisture will make its way northward, and we should have a very broad, warm sector uh, for these storms to work off of this afternoon and evening. Let's take a look at satellite real quick, and you see those storms firing back across East Texas, that activity right along the front there in Alabama, uh, but a very, uh, very um, uh, favorable-looking sky across the region here. These strong onshore flow out of the south-southwest, uh, promoting that moisture advection into the region. That Again, that stationary front, you can see somewhat of the boundary on satellite right in here. 
That will shift a little bit northward as we go into the afternoon hours today, and that will be a focus for enhanced perhaps enhanced tornado potential for any storms that track along and near it this afternoon and evening. But overall, a broad warm sector, lots of these cumulus cloud streets here uh, denoting strong instability across the region. Let's take a look at some soundings real quick. This is the 12Z observed Lake Charles sounding from this morning. Fairly deep moist layer extending up, up, up above about 850 millibars. Already some decent instability in place at 12Z. And no doubt, given the very strong heating that's ongoing, this in instability should have increased uh, pretty significantly up to this point. Let's take a look at the SPC mesoanalysis, mixed layer cape, uh, and let me zoom into the southern southeast sector. And you already see mixed layer cape, 2,000 to 2,500, especially across this region from southeast Louisiana into southern Mississippi and Alabama into the Florida panhandle. So very strong instability, especially for southeast standards. Uh, in play, and that's going to help foster that significant hail threat, as well as potentially a strong tornado threat later on this afternoon and evening. Very strong instability in play at this point. This was, again, Lake Charles at 12Z. Some drier air aloft here. I don't think that's going to be too much of an issue today. We, saw, we had the, these questions a couple days ago for our moderate risk that produced the Rolling Fork, Mississippi, uh, t long track tornado that also, uh, as well as the other one that hit Amory, Mississippi into Florence, Alabama. So not going to be too much of an issue, I don't think, today. Hodographs, long hodographs, very favorable for supercells. And again, the subtle forcing with this shortwave should provide a discrete supercell mode, at least for the few, first few hours of storm development. Low-level shear, though, not particularly strong, at least in the morning. Same thing out here as we see across Slidell, Louisiana. Mixed layer cape already at 12Z at about 2,000 joules per kilogram there. Much deeper moist layer out to the east. That is going to be transported into the region south of that stationary front this afternoon and evening. Very strong instability. You can see already in place in the morning. That has only grown as that surface heating has taken place this afternoon, or this, this late morning into early afternoon. Low-level shear remains weak across the region. Th these are the VWP vertical wind profiles taken from the radar. So the radar... Um, as the radar beam goes out, we can actually estimate the wind speeds uh, and, and wind direction from the velocity data. And that's how we can come up with an estimated hodograph for what's going on at each of these radar sites uh, at a current time. Obviously, we don't have soundings that go up every, you know, so uh, every, you know, at a very frequent clip, but the, we can get these hodographs from the radar data at each of these NS, uh, NWS radar sites. And this is our current situation right now. Lake Charles, this is not a full hodograph, but you can see this is at one kilometer, this is at the surface. Not much low level shear to speak of at this point. And that's why the large hail threat is going to focus this afternoon and evening, or maximize this afternoon, uh, especially because that low level shear is not going to ramp up until later on uh, into the late afternoon and early evening hours. Uh, Fort Polk, gonna show the same thing here. This may be just north of the front. Maybe right on the front, still very weak low-level shear at this point, farther to the east ahead of those storms in Alabama. Uh, this is our radar in southeast Alabama. Once again, very weak low-level shear, strong deep layer shear for supercells. But again, low-level shear remaining weak at this point. That's going to favor a large to very large hail, given very strong instability in play. Strong deep layer shear for supercells, weak low level shear, and a discrete storm mode, all going to favor large to very large hail in this particular setup. All right, let's look at some model data. This is the 12Z NAM real quick. I'm gonna start right at 700 millibars. You see that shortwave back here across West Texas at 12Z. That has rotated through off to the east somewhat. This is uh, right about uh, just, this is a, would be valid at 1 p.m. Central Daylight Time. So right about now as you're seeing this video, the shortwave here across east Texas, that will continue to rotate off to the east. Some modest strengthening of those winds in the mid-levels as well. This is at 0Z. Uh, shortwave is right in there. So should foster discrete storm development right out ahead of it across Louisiana, Mississippi, and eventually into Alabama as we go into the evening hours. Let me zoom into the low-level jet as well. We see, again, modest strengthening of those mid-level winds. And I'm going to zoom in here to the southeast sector. And you see, this is at 21, this is at 0Z, 3Z. Very modest uh, enhancement of the low-level jet across this region. That will uh, work to enlarge low-level hodographs and enhance the tornado threat, especially with any storm that can ride along that boundary, that surface front. As we know, the surface front can be an enhanced area for low-level shear and as uh, in turn an enhanced area for uh, tornadoes, perhaps strong tornadoes right near that boundary. So low-level low jet will continue to ramp up as we go into the evening, and that's when the tornado threat will be maximized, and that's why the 15 hatch is more so off here into Mississippi and Alabama, where that access to the low-level jet will be 
uh, strengthening come this evening. This is at 3Z, so a few hours after sunset, 6Z, right about midnight or so, just 1 a.m., uh, low-level jet across the region, fairly strong, and that should enhance the tornado threat. Let's go to our surface pattern once again, not a robust surface pattern. Uh, uh, surface low anywhere, we, maybe some semblance of some development right along the frontal zone, uh, but mostly that surface, that stationary front is going to be our main surface feature for this particular event. You'll see with moisture here that boundary surges north just a little bit, but stays fairly much, pretty much in place throughout the entire day across the region, stretching, warm sector stretches all the way back into East Texas, up into central Louisiana, central Mississippi, south central Mississippi, into Alabama, and again, storms will form Discrete storms will form and are forming in East Texas, moving into Louisiana with a large hail and damaging wind threat. Maybe an outside chance for a tornado or two into this afternoon, but again, the any storm that tracks along this front, which is favorably aligned with the storm motion, uh, so we could, if any storm that tr will be able to track along this front for a long distance could have a strong to perhaps long track tornado threat. Let's take some soundings here. So I'm gonna go uh, at 21Z. Let's take one right here at Alexandria, Louisiana. We'll take one here across Mississippi as well, just to show you how the environment progresses throughout the afternoon. So this is at 21Z on the NAM. You'll see instability is extremely high end for the southeast. The NAM showing about 3,500 joules per kilogram of mixed layer CAPE with very strong low level instability, zero to three kilometer CAPE of a, almost 200 joules per kilogram. So extremely high instability out here. This is farther west. Low level shear has strengthened somewhat across this region. Um, I still think that could be the, the case. Uh, I still think the large hail threat will maximize here given very strong instability uh, in the mid-levels, low and mid-levels, strong deep layer shear for supercells, discrete storm mode. We could see an all hazards threat with a large to significant hail threat. We could see some baseball size plus hail with these storms given the profiles that are in place. Outside chance for a tornado or two. Again, that threat is going to maximize later on this evening. Farther out to the east, you see across Mississippi and Alabama. Instability still very strong, almost 3,000 joules per kilogram of mixed layer cape. Strong low level instability as well. Deep layer, deep layer shear favorable for supercells. Low level shear not so much favorable for tornadoes, but that will foster again a large hail threat across the region as we go into the afternoon hours. Now, let's go to zero Z here. And let me go out across Western Mississippi. Let's just do a couple of soundings out here across the area. Western Mississippi, Alabama, Mississippi border there, just south of the frontal zone. And this is our profile at 0Z. So 7 p.m. Central Daylight Time, very favorable looking profile for some significant severe weather. Once again, very large instability maintains itself throughout the day. Very moist low levels, strong low level instability as well. Deep layer shear still favorable for supercells, and we've increased that low-level shear, that curvature in the low-level hodograph. Very strong, that low-level jet ramping up a little bit as we go into the uh, afternoon, into the evening hours. Farther to the east, once again, a favorable setup. Lots of streamwise vorticity in the low levels with these soundings, uh, with these hodographs. You see, as we talked about before, streamwise vorticity is how parallel the storm uh, relative wind vector, drawn from our storm motion, back to our hodograph at our point of interest, and then our horizontal vorticity vector, which is perpendicular to the left of the hodograph. And these two vectors are parallel. That is when you have strong streamwise vorticity, and that is much more favorable for tornado genesis in supercells than crosswise vorticity, in which these would be more perpendicular to each other. Think of it as the a quarterback, an NFL, an NFL quarterback throwing a football with that perfect spiral. That per perfect spiral is going to be ingested into the storm. Doesn't that's, that storm doesn't have to do much work to get that in, to be a tornado, especially in an environment, a thermodynamic environment such as this. So, very favorable look for some significant severe weather. Strong streamwise vorticity in these hodographs. Uh, very strong low-level shear amid very strong low-level instability and uh, deep layer instability as well, um, all favoring a significant severe threat. Large hail threat will, con will continue into the evening, I think transitioning into a little bit more of a tornado threat, still some large hail reports uh, into the evening. Uh, but then eventually storms, given the storm, uh, the shear vectors should be fairly parallel to this uh, surface boundary here. Um, you can see that. Uh, I think the subtle forcing initially for the first several hours of development will favor a discrete mode, but eventually we will see a lot of storms uh, conglomerate along this front. We will get more of a, an MCS uh, type of complex to develop across Mississippi and Alabama. 
Again, tornado threat should maximize then. We may see a slight mode change by the time the tornado threat maximizes across Mississippi and Alabama into the evening hours. Uh, but still, some strong tornadoes are possible within any uh, ongoing convection given very strong instability and deep layer and low-level shear. So that is going to be the story for today. Let's take a look at the the HRRR just for um, some, uh, just for giggles here. This is the latest hurl. Actually, let me look at the 16Z. Should be out far enough. So latest HRRR run. You see those storms in Alabama. Try to become supercells here again with a mostly a large hail and damaging wind threat across south central Alabama with additional development back out to the west across east Texas into Louisiana. Those storms tracking close to the front, very strong uh, deep layer instability and shear. So any storm that tracks along the front will have a tornado threat, mostly a large hail threat, but again, the low level jet will be increasing throughout this time. This is 6 p.m. Central Daylight Time. So several any supercell that's ongoing and tracking near the front will have a strong tornado threat. M multiple semi-discrete updrafts within this complex, and then eventually we uh, consolidated into more of an MCS with even a bow echo feature uh, being modeled on the HRRR here, that could have a significant tornado threat as well uh, as that MCS uh, surges east uh, into the nighttime hours. So storms are firing now, as we said, um, across east Texas, some storms that are ongoing across Alabama. Those will pose a severe threat in the short term as they are discrete and tracking near that frontal zone but we should see more robust development out here across far east Texas into Louisiana as that surface front surges a little bit farther to the north and that will favor a large hail threat over the next few hours. Storms moving off this evening into Mississippi and Alabama with a an increasing tornado threat going toward late afternoon and evening as that low level jet ramps up modestly. Uh, low level hodograph curvature, very strong low level shear, strong streamwise vorticity uh, in these profiles should favor a, long tor a strong tornado threat and again, any supercell that tracks along the surface front will have the potential for a, a long track tornado, uh, perhaps. And then the mode will transition to more of a clustered or linear uh, mode as we go into Mississippi and Al especially toward Alabama this evening uh, with a continued strong tornado and damaging wind threat. So once again, moderate risk from the SPC, uh, strong tornadoes, a possibility, damaging winds, and significant large hail uh, the main threats for today. So going to be an interesting event, definitely has ramped up over the past couple, uh, past day or so, especially this morning. Uh, so stay weather aware if you're in these regions. I know we just got rocked by severe weather uh, on Friday, uh, but this is the heart of severe weather season for the Southeast. So these frequent significant severe events are not uncommon for this area. So if you live in these areas, places like Alexandria, Louisiana, Jackson, Mississippi, um, you know, uh, far Southwest Alabama, towns like Silas, uh, in that vicinity. Definitely need to be on alert for significant severe weather today uh, into tonight. So that's going to do it. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.